This is the number one podcast, whether you're looking to flip, wholesale, or buy rentals. Here at Future Flipper, we transform lives through real estate investing. And now, your host, Brian Davila. All right, Alex. Well, I am excited to have you on the Future Flipper podcast. I know you are crushing it. Um, you're doing a lot of uh, Facebook marketing and a bunch of different things. But um, before we get into that, uh, can you give me a quick background about yourself? Absolutely. So got into the real estate game as an agent. So got licensed in California uh, about five years ago. Um, and that's kind of where I got the bread and butter, you know, the ABCs. Um, was living in California, LA at the time, got my license, started doing deals as just a regular agent. Um, you know, knew a couple of mortgage brokers who basically they were kind of sourcing their own leads and they needed, you know, realtors to kind of act on their behalf. They would take 50%. It was a wasn't a great deal, but it, I mean, it, it got me in the game. Um, <clears throat> originally from Vegas, though, so uh, you know, eventually went and got my license in Vegas. Uh, I, I did go to college to University of Colorado Boulder, um, completely having nothing to do with real estate. Um, but when I got into the real estate game, you know, got my license for both, and simultaneously, kind of just YouTube University got obsessed with wholesaling. Um, Started learning all about it, you know, Brett Daniels, um, Wholesaling Inc., uh, just podcast after podcast, bigger pockets on my phone at three in the morning, like, oh, how, how can I get deals? You know what I mean? Um, all at the same time while kind of acting as a realtor, right? And and people ask me, like, hey, do you want to, you know, should you be a realtor? Should you not be a realtor? And in my opinion, I mean, just as you, you're, you're obviously licensed and we're licensed as well, I, I do think it's a good foundation for, um, kind of understanding the basics of real estate, right? And people take you more seriously when you have a license. Don't get me wrong, there's people that kill it that don't have a license, um, but I do think that, like I wouldn't be where I'm at today unless I went through those phases in my life in real estate. And now, basically, uh, I have a wholesale operation, five acquisition managers, a uh, partner who's like basically COO, kind of runs the sales side of things. Um, and yeah, that's that's where we're at today. Nice. So yeah, so I actually, uh, I, I do agree with you where um, it does benefit to have a real estate license. I know it's not, it's definitely not 100% necessary, but I think it gives you a solid foundation. And, and I think that like the thing that I like about being a realtor um, which I don't sell houses anymore as a realtor, but what I did like was that if you wanted to be around people who are like-minded and doing stuff, you just go to the office, you go to the office, you can sit in the bullpen. There's, there's things going, there's, there's people walking around. You can go talk to people, but wholesalers, they don't usually have that. So if you become a wholesaler, you start watching YouTube and then you got to join a course, but there's no there's nowhere to physically go and just on a day to day basis, G, just be and just be surrounded with a whole bunch of other wholesalers. So, yeah, I, I agree with you there. So, plus, I mean, you get to use your license as well, like on deals that you're doing. It's still like it's still in use. We're just not really marketing as a realtor, yeah, you know? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Do you still have your license active? Uh, my license in Las Vegas expired, and I still have my license in Ve uh, in California, but I don't know uh -huh. if I'm going to keep it. I'm I'm kind of like it's kind of it's a long story, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're you're at a you're at a different you know stage yeah. now where like you may not. I mean, because there's you know there's also liabilities with it. You know, you got to pay your fees. You got. I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? Then you have a, the fiduciary duty. They say you know yeah. so so. Yeah. But I, I don't talk to like people about real estate. So whenever I buy deals, it's like on the MLS, which doesn't really matter if I have a license or not, or from wholesalers and stuff like that. So it's very rare that I buy deals direct to seller. But um, but all right. So you you start off as a realtor, and then you started getting obsessed with wholesaling. How did you scale your business? Yeah. So. Um you know, step one was, you know, I, I, I did the cold calling at first and I remember how much I hated it. Um, and the first scaling moment was when I hired, I hired a single caller, basically. Mm -hmm. um, that was back in 2018, 19, no, 2019, right? So that was the first step where I was like, okay, like, you know, I'm, I'm buying these massive lists, right, of whatever it was at the time, pre-foreclosures. Um, 
And, you know, instead of me calling all these people, why don't I have somebody call them while I can work on advancing the business? Right. Mm -hmm. So that was the first step. Um, Then when I think when we really took off was definitely when I brought my partner on. And um, at that point, we had like a call center. You know, we had like three people calling that we hired a service. Basically, that was calling. Um, We were doing SMS already. um, And then my partner would came on and he started doing the acquisitions. Mm -hmm. Right. So any lead that comes into the bucket in our CRM, he was calling them. Right. And I was taking care of everything else. Dispo, website, relationships, you know, everything else, contracts, all that. I was acting as the TC. Um, so that was really, you know, when I brought my partner, his name is Noah. He, he, when he brought, when he came on is really when we took off shortly after that, we, we started hiring, you know, we started hiring other acquisition managers and then, you know, we started, started doing Facebook ads, PPC, you know, we had a, a good balance of inbound and outbound going. So, um, you know, in 2020 was really when we took off, it was, you know, right after COVID everybody got scared and we sat for a second. I was like, all right, what do we do? I was like, let's put, you know, 2,500 on Facebook ads. Next thing you know, you know, actually, you know, what's funny is I actually sold you a deal yeah. in 2020 in Vegas so, and that was a Facebook yeah, ad. Yeah. I remember that was a Facebook yeah. ad. So that was, that was kind of right around the time where this all kind of took off. Um, and you know, the mixture of Facebook ads, three callers and SMS going, it, you know, started, you know, magic started happening. I think we probably made like 500 K, uh, total profit in 2020. Last year we did 912, and then this year we did 989 between January and June. Jeez. So, yeah. So it's 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 been a, it's been a significant increase um, every year, and I definitely think that once we once we brought in other acquisition managers, where like my partner wasn't even the one doing it, was when it was really like you know an oiled machine, and we were just kind of taken off from there. Justin, cut this. Can you turn, try turning your microphone down a little bit? I think it's a very powerful mic. You're turning it up right now. I can hear you turning it up. Yeah. Yeah. Is that better? Is that better? Toward, turn it down more. Is that better? More, more, more. Is that better? I don't even know. If, Wait, I yeah, can, I don't, I can do it manually right here actually. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Is that better? It's loud. Is that better? It's a little bit better. Is that yeah. better? Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, Perfect. there you go. That's a way better. Sorry about that. Okay, so, okay, so you just said you made nine hundred and twenty thousand dollars from Facebook ads wholesaling. Is that right? Not just Facebook ads. That's everything. Oh, okay, combined. okay. That's cold calling, SMS, that's uh, JV, everything. That's including. Okay, everything. so I guess from that nine hundred and twenty that you made wholesaling, what was like the biggest revenue coming from? Which stream? So last year it was Facebook ads. Um, it was probably half. Oh no, it's probably sixty percent of it was Facebook okay. ads. So you um, made six hundred thousand dollars using Facebook ads wholesaling. Exactly, okay. just Facebook ads. Now I'm not going to lie to you. Um, <laughs> Facebook ads is. Uh, I feel like it comes in like seasons. It's a seasonal thing. <laughs> I swear. Like, like there's certain months where it does better. You know what uh-huh. I mean? There's certain there's certain aspects like you know what i mean like I, I remember at one point like it was like oh my goodness like these people are, it was almost like the quality of the lead was as if it was ppc or like some high quality lead but it was the cost of it was just yeah. cheaper then that changed that changed very quickly um and then it came back <laughs> so that's another thing is like it's very important to kind of keep tabs on everything and really be like running those kpis like okay like how you know at one point i had to turn it off because it was like all right nobody's locking up these facebook leads half these leads are fake um you know so so it it, we mean just we we rode the wave at the right time um some of our biggest deals were there um i think our biggest deal ever to this day was 98k i mean i remember we're wholesalers we're not we don't flip We, we we have taken down deals where we you know we we get private money and we quickly put it on the market but we're you know we're wholesalers by wholesalers so um, 98k uh, assignment fee was the biggest one we ever made. Yeah, was that the deal that I bought? Because I remember the wholesale fee that I paid was like not that small. <laughs> no, no, no. You're, you're, yours, <laughs> yours, yours was yours was like fifty or sixty. Uh-huh. Um, but that this one was in Florida, and it was sold to Amherst, a hedge fund, which we'll get into that stuff. Yeah. As well. So okay, so let's 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 dive into Facebook ads because you're you're the only wholesaler that I know that publicly speaks about it i'm pretty sure there's people who do it but they don't like to share and you know explain what's going on so Mm -hmm. what got you into running facebook ads for wholesaling and i guess how did you scale it yeah so um basically we 
a lot of people that do Facebook ads, they kind of half ass it. They they put a little picture, you know, they teach you put a little picture of a messed up house, say we'll buy your house for cash. Yeah. I took it one step further, right? And I hired a company to make a a little quick like 30 second like video that was kind of it was like a cartoon video. It was like, hey, you want to sell your house? It was almost kind of like as if it was an eye buyer. Like I was almost acting our brand is almost like a semi eye buyer in yeah. a way. So I think that when we put a little bit of money, I mean that video cost me four hundred bucks. Like we put we put that into that, had the right ad copy. And the other huge thing was we're not only in Vegas, we're not only in Cali. We're kind of we're running them nationwide. Oh, yeah. And if you have a broader spectrum of where this because Facebook has its own algorithm, mm-hmm. right? And at the end of the day, only a certain amount of people are gonna see it in Vegas. If you can run it in multiple markets, that's kind of when you are really getting success. I mean, we were getting like 15 leads a day and like some of these leads were good, you know, like real good. Like, hey, like I need to sell this right now, mm-hmm. you know? Um, they're hitting you up. It's not like, you know, it's not you hitting them up on a cold call. They're hitting yeah. you up. Like, it's you know. Inbound marketing. So, yeah. So I would say those things is is the nationwide thing is what made us successful. The Like, you know, don't, don't slap some photo that everybody's using on the internet and just say, hey, I want to buy your house. Like, you know, put a little effort into it. It doesn't have to be a crazy video, but just put a little bit more into the content. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I mean, our, our, our sales side is strong, you know, like my, at, at the time my partner was doing most of the acquisitions. And so he's, he was really strong with being able to convert these, um, you know, but that come that's, that doesn't really matter what lead source it is, right? You need a strong sales conversion anyway. Yeah. So. But what about like, let's, okay. So you have the ad, you know, the, the 30 second video, you have a strong sales team, but like who is actually like posting and and knows how to target the demographics and stuff like that. Like, how does that work? Oh yeah, that's that was that was all me. Um, like, I'm I'm running all that side of things. Oh, so um, you didn't outsource it's, it. So actually, was no, I didn't outsource oh, okay. it. No, no, no. Mm. I have outsourced PPC before, mm. um, which I don't love PPC by the way. Um, but no, I did this all myself. So the cool thing about Facebook was. They actually have, if you spend a certain amount of money, they will give you like a dedicated rep that you could literally call. It's like a coach at any time. So I would call him like daily, like, okay, how do I like make this happen? Like, how do I make that happen? So it was a combination of that and then just, you know, obsession, just, you know, I'm learning this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring this out. I'm, I'm on the internet learning it, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, it's like, it's, it's nobody's going to really do it. Like if you pay another company to do it, yeah, sure. They might be able to put it on, but like, they're not going to care, mm-hmm. you know, like like I care, yeah. like, you know, how much money my company is yeah. making. So that was the difference. Okay. So like how much money do you have to spend to get like a Facebook support? So I think it was, it was like, I think to, you have to get to like 10 K oh, and we okay. were doing it at like, it, yeah. So it's not, I mean, but I'm talking about this was like over the course of three, four months. Uh, right. So we didn't get it at first. Uh, okay. So, so I was running it. I was running it. And then one day I got a call and I'm like, it's like, it says Facebook on my phone. I'm like, Who the, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> and the next thing you know, it's like this person's like, yeah, hi, I'm Jody. And I'm your personal rep. Like, let's sit down. Let's hop in. I'm like, all right, let's, let's, let's do it. You know? And we rode that wave. We rode that wave for a long time. Um, and like I said, it was like 60% of our income in 2021. Um, Currently, it's off right now, uh, but I do have plans and aspirations to kind of move it forward, you know, when things are kind of figured out. And, and yeah, because I think it's, I mean, I was putting 2500 basically a month. So that was our budget. It, that's the cool thing. It's like, it's not pay-per-click. So it's like, it's not like every time somebody clicks, it's like you can set a budget, 2500 and it'll give you like an estimate. Like, okay, you're going to get, I don't know, 5 to uh, 11 per day. Oh, leads. Um, that's more so how it works. Yeah. Okay. And then like, but like, let me ask it another way. Like when you're, when you're like setting a budget for 2,500, who are you targeting or is it blank or do you do by age? Do you do by like a great question. city or how does that work? So it used to, so right in the middle of all of this, right? You used to be able to target crazy stuff like age, sex, like income, all kinds of stuff. And then Facebook went through like this whole re like revamp of where you couldn't do that. You weren't allowed to do that. So you had to, basically it's very blank. The only thing you're targeting is location. However, Facebook is very smart. So it knows who to target. Does that yeah. make sense? So like it's targeting the, it knows what you're, you have to select like, Hey, this is in the real estate sphere or whatever. And from there, they're going to target it based on like, you don't want to, you're not, we're not smarter than Facebook. Like they have their own algorithm to do it. You're just targeting location. Mm-hmm. So I put, you know, we're heavy in Florida, all of Florida, all of Florida, all of Nevada. We were running Cali. We've gotten deals done in, we did, we've done deals in nine States. I, uh, no, sorry, not, uh, Idaho, Boise, Idaho, 
um, Oklahoma, we've done a deal. Texas, we've done a deal. These mostly were like one or two offs. Like we weren't consistent, but they were all from Facebook ads because somebody would inquire, and be like, yeah, I'll take your house for 50K, slap it right out, you know, to somebody for 80, 90, whatever it was, and, and, and done deals. So, Got it. So you just picked yeah. the city, set a budget, and then let Facebook kind of do its thing. Exactly. That's crazy. Exactly. That's the beautiful yeah. part. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it sounds like PPC on like steroids and cheaper. <laughs> it, it is. And again, the reason we quit though is because it does go through these cycles where the lead quality is terrible. Is not I've great. tried it before. I've tried it before. And then I would have people mm-hmm. who call and they're like, hey, uh, I want to rent a house. And I'm like, dude, our ad did not say anything about renting a house. <laughs> exactly. Like, or like people would. They would enter their information. We would call, and they're like, "Oh, we did not enter our information." Which, which I was like confused, like, "Okay, like, why are we getting these leads?" But then we would get some leads that were decent. So it was like mm-hmm. it, it it varied so much, and I didn't have the time to like keep tweaking it, and and right. and we were having success doing RVMs, cold calling, other stuff. Where I was like, "All right, let's just shut this down because it's too many leads, and right. it's we we can't figure out how to like fix it." Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, like it, that definitely like happened to us as well. You know, so the we that's why we turned it off is because we were getting, you know, there's a lot of trash leads, too. You know, so um, one thing is you, you definitely I mean, how long did you have it on before you turned it off? Like a, It wasn't that long, maybe like three months or something like that. OK, so I mean, it's not like too short. But yeah. I mean, you do want to see it. I mean, you got to be converted. You know, what I mean, like, were you getting like multiple per day? Yeah, I was getting a lot of leads, but like good like, leads. Sh- they're they were crap. Not, it was like very. Right. And then and then my people started to become lazy because they're like, all right, we have RVM leads who are coming in and we right. have a good system. We could filter them. I want to call. Right. those. I don't want to call like these Facebook leads where half of the time they don't even know what we're calling about. So, yeah. Right. No, I, I get that. And that definitely at one point happened to us. And that's why I started off with like it was seasonal. It was weird. It was like like during I think during holiday seasons or like I remember fall and like winter were really hot mm-hmm. and then it would dry up like January, February, March would dry up. It's mm-hmm. there's something going on like with Facebook's al- algorithm. You know what I mean? The, the cool thing is it's really just like, you know, turn on and off. Like it's not, you know what I mean? If you don't, if you, if, if it's not working, you can just turn it off. Mm-hmm. Um, however, you know, we have seen like the, just the aspect of inbound versus outbound, yeah. right? Like, you know what I mean? It's a different story. Mm-hmm. Like, like for the outbound, it's a much different, Mind, like mindset and it's like it's like you know when you're talking to a girl you know what i mean like she's hitting you up versus he like that that in itself yeah. is just i mean you know what i mean and that's what facebook does allow yeah. you know what i mean because like they're leaving their information yeah sure a lot of them are crap you know what i mean but they are giving you the information you're not randomly calling them reaching yeah. out to them so yeah. yeah so how did you guys pivot so you guys were crushing it on facebook making hand over fist and then what happened then but keep in mind we still had cold call and sms still running right so this is just like the power three yeah. right um we turned cold call we doubled it we we two x it um we actually were using uh uh carlos's what are they the, the call geeks and they did really well for us it was really it was it was like really really well surprisingly um <laughs> surprisingly. and we we turned it on to like we we doubled their callers basically you know they're they're cold calling then they they dump it into our crm my acquisition managers are calling we're talking 20 leads a day right and being divvied up and we were just firing just firing firing you know and then sms as well we're sending three to four thousand messages per day um and and the biggest thing is like with the lists like people try and get all cute like we keep it so simple absentee you know i'd rather deal with somebody that doesn't live in the house Mm -hmm. um and that's it Really, I mean, later, later we when we started, you know, we built these relationships with the institutional buyers. We knew what they were looking for, you know, three bed, built after whatever year. So like, I would add that kind of stuff in there. But really, like, I'm not going. You know, we've had success with foreclosures and and all kinds of other stuff. But 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 really, it's you, you don't need that. You know what I mean? You don't necessarily. You, know, you really don't know. You know, somebody could be trying to sell, right? So that's that was our philosophy. It was kind of like a spray and pray scenario, and we were going more based off the type of the house. Got it. So. And then, um, so how many cold callers uh, did you have, and like, what kind of return were you getting on the cold callers? Yeah, so it was about eight at our highest point, um, and we had eight, and then about thirty five hundred messages going per day, and per we were averaging about sixteen net leads a day. Mm-hmm. 
So, you know, that's anybody raising their hand. Yeah, like I'm willing to sell, yeah. right? Like, sure, you know, they might be you know, way off on the price, whatever it might be. Um, that cost, cold calling itself was costing us, what, like eight? Eight thousand a month, eight 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 ish, eight nine thousand a mm-hmm. month, something like that, somewhere around there. Um, and you know, in our in some of our, we were making, I mean, it was a seven x or not or more return at some points. You know, obviously things vary by month. I mean, our best month we were doing, you know, we had two hundred fifty k months, you know, back to back to back earlier this year. Um, so we had huge months that were just stacked up. Um, and most of those leads during those times were definitely calling from the call center. You know, a little bit of SMS sprinkled in there, but the call center definitely was 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 moving. Okay. All right. So you're just crushing uh, crushing that. And then, like, what happened this year with the market change? Yeah. So even not even this year, but I would say fall of 21. Um the this is probably the biggest pivot we had in the company was um you know we used to sell the flippers and and you know I, you know I love you guys I respect <laughs> you guys you guys work hard and everything but at the end of the end of the day like <laughs> at the end of the day like these institutional buyers are going to pay more than you guys you know what i mean and like i don't want to disrespect you even and be like hey like do you want this deal do you want this 330k deal for 320 like yeah. you know what i mean um so so that's really what changed was we started selling these deals to hedge funds and open door mm-hmm. and we created systems to do that uh i don't know if you've heard of novations as well we yeah. had a coach eric brewer very close friend of ours like you know huge mentor of ours um and we also are in collective genius. Those things all happened in fall of 21 and with the institutional buyers. And we just, we were able to basically lock, I mean, granted the market, right? Like the market helped a lot, but I'm talking locking up deals that are worth 250 for 232. Like yeah. what world is that working, you know, and yeah. making 15 K on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so that was the biggest change. And we had a really, really close relationship with Amherst specifically. They're one of the biggest funds. Um, met a lady there that, She's been flipping or selling or buying houses since the 70s, and she's like an executive there, and she became like a mentor to us, and she would like call me and my partner every week. We'd talk about the market. She was doing like acquisitions, and like she was almost like above us, but she was still working with us because of our relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, selling to them, and then Open Door was the other big one. We created a system where, I mean, Open Door was buying everything. Yeah, that, like they were. Yeah, like shit that they shouldn't buy. Yeah. Like you know what yeah. I mean? Like 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 ugly shit. You know what I mean? I never going to the house either. Like. Like, us, like, go, like looking at the pictures and stuff like that. Um, so, so that was really the two biggest changes I think was when we found these new buyers and built these relationships. We kind of took it to the next level and we're just like, all right, we're all in on this. You know, like I, you know, bought data that was like, this is exactly what Amherst is buying. They're not going to buy after this year. These are the markets. You know what I mean? Did a little research and stuff, and we just farmed and farmed and farmed. And that's kind of what, that was the biggest change, I would say. Dang. So, so you guys started like really picking up at the end of 2021, also. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I would say what like from June of 21 to June, like year over. So like those 12 months, it was closer to about 1.7 that we did. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, July, August, obviously, everybody's feeling the market. So where there's some pivots going on, um, we were lucky enough to, like, you know, really build momentum. Um, you know, right now we're, we're, we're kind of restructuring, you know, re-strategizing as everybody is, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that's kind of what's going on right now. But, you know, for anybody out there that's that's struggling with, with that, like, like this market will come around. You know, right now is the time. They can't take education away from you. You know, they can't take your mindset away from you. So constantly be working, like, on yourself, on your company. Make sure everybody's pumped up. Like, I'm all about that life. So Yeah. Okay. So let, can we talk about novations? Absolutely. Okay, so what is a novation? All right. So, um, and shout out to Eric Brewer. He obviously is the king of novation. Um, novation is basically locking up a deal and explaining to the seller, like, hey, I understand you want a little bit of a higher number. Mm-hmm. In order for me to get you that higher number, I'm going to need time and I'm going to need access. You know, and you're basically disclosing to them that, like, hey, you want this number, I'll get it to you, but I need access and I can do whatever I want with it. And then basically you take it to MLS. You mm-hmm. take it to MLS. You may 
in, in certain innovation cases, right, you may need to come in there and actually do a little bit of work. So, like, you know, we'll put some paint on there. Like, we had a pool situation one time where, like, the house was cool, right? And, like, it just the pool was, like, green. And we're like, all right, so let's clean this pool out. Let's get the, like, you know, all that stuff. You guys, us as the middle party is responsible for all that, for the cost, for doing it, for listing it, paying the commissions, right? So let's you rewind, on let's rewind, let's rewind. Okay. You're saying MLS, all this stuff. Okay. Talk to me like I'm a fifth grader. Okay. And right, talk, so, talk to me about the logistics. So you talk to a homeowner, it. homeowner wants to sell. Are they signing a purchase agreement? Are you wholesaling it? Are you assigning They're signing- it? Like, okay. Same exact thing. They're, they're signing a purchase agreement. However, there are two additional terms in there. The term is saying that we have the right to go to the MLS with the property, number one. So that means you are allowed to sell it on the open market on their behalf. Okay. So and number two, list it. and then number two, we have the right to novate it. Simple as that. Renovate it. Same thing. You have, everybody has the, you know, and or signs, right, in their contract. Yeah. It's super simple. Just, just in under miscellaneous terms, you add, and we have the right to to novate it as well right so on the front end that's the only thing that changes right so it's the same purchase contract you just add those two terms right okay that's number one that's step a right now you have this right you get in there you get you do pictures you you know you figure out what you need to do you know if it's like a little bit of work a little bit of paint or maybe you just you just put it right back on the market right so Mm -hmm. if you're an agent i'm an agent in vegas right so I'll put it right back on the market under my license at a higher number. So let's say I have it locked up at 200, you know, spent a little bit of money on making the pool nice, but I put it on the market at 250. Mm -hmm. This seller lives in Indiana. He doesn't give a crap. He just wants his 200K. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. Now, MLS, right? So we're on the open market. Somebody contacts me. Okay, I'll buy it for 250, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We take that offer, right? And in what we do is there's another document it's called a novation document it's similar to an assignment it's just what it's doing is instead of assigning it to them it's replacing the document so basically that document will then tell the seller hey you're still getting 200k but i am reselling this property right so they know so like there's it, that's the difference is like you have to you have to basically disclose up front like this works for deals that are tighter because you're like, hey, okay, I can get you that property, right? But like, I may sell this, you know, I may resell this, I may sell this to a parenting company, I'll do the work, this and that, right? And a lot of times people don't care, like they really don't, they just want their number. So if you're up front and it's all, it all comes down to the pitch from the front end, you know? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Seller, I need time, access, right? I'm gonna bring in other investors or you're just more upfront about it on the front end, right? Mm. And then logistically, when you get that offer, you basically take that novation document, mm-hmm. you send it to the seller, the A party, right? And you say, hey, you're getting 200K, but this is being sold to whoever the buyer is. That's all it is. Got it. I mean, I, okay, I, let's re- I could even. Yeah. Hit- okay, so I got the first part. You approach the homeowner, you sign a purchase agreement, setting a price, and agreeing that whatever it sells for over goes to the buyer, the new buyer. And then. On that agreement, you're saying, hey, we want the right to list the property on the MLS and we want the right to renovate the property. Then you once you get that contract executed, you um, then decide if you're going to renovate it or what you're going to do. You're going to list it on the market. Um, The part that I don't understand is when a buyer submits an offer on that property, a new buyer, the end buyer. Who signs that purchase agreement? If you're listening to this podcast, then my guess is you're interested in real estate investing. Some of you are just starting out while others are trying to scale their business to the next level. But the problem is with so much information out there, most people don't know which program or coach to trust. Well, I'm a bit biased, but I believe my company, Future Flipper, can help you get to the next level. We've coached thousands of students from all over the world on how to build their real estate investing business. It doesn't matter whether you want to flip, wholesale, or buy rentals. Our coaching program has everything you need to become a great investor. There are many things that we include with coaching, but to give you a few examples, you're going to get an accountability coach. These are people that have had success in their own business, and they want to make sure that you achieve success in yours. We also have all of our documents, our systems, and processes that I've used to buy hundreds of homes. You can copy and paste them directly into your own business. And we have events where you get to meet me, top-level guest speakers, and other students who are crushing it. My students do deals with each other, and I personally do deals with them too. In fact, at a recent event, I just honored over 20 people in our program that made over a million dollars in the last year. 
So if you want to grow your real estate business, head over to futureflipper.com and apply for a call with our team. The call is completely free and they can help point you in the right direction whether you work with us or not. So go to futureflipper.com and book your call today. Is it though? Good, great question. So yeah. there's two ways to go about it, right? And some sellers are okay. We, in our contract, we actually have clauses that allow us, it's a limited power of attorney. Mm -hmm. So we add a limited power of attorney saying that, hey, we have the right to, you know, anything regarding to the property, we're allowed to basically sign listing, contracts, whatever it is, we're just getting you the 200. Now, some sellers are not okay with that, right? And those are the ones you have to be more upfront with because then they do have to sign that B to C. However, again, if you're pitching it from the front end, right? And explaining like, look, we're going to do all this. We're going to market it. We're going to fix it. When they see that higher offer, as long as it's up front, like then they knew that that was going to happen. They don't care that that's a higher number, right? Cause they know that you had to do that work to get there. Mm -hmm. That, so that's one of the, one of the two options. One, you, we always try and send the limited POA in our original contract, right? Where it says we have the right to, you know, sign listing and, and, uh, offers on your behalf, as long as you get 200 K, whatever it is, if they don't agree to that, which happens, I don't know, maybe 25, 30% of the time. Um, then they, we just, you know, we just, we set a little bit more expectation. We're like, Hey, okay, perfect. Like this is what we're doing, you know? And it, it's, it's, it makes sense for a lot of sellers who like really just, they don't want to deal with it. Like there's, you know, in order for them to sell it, they'd have to go do this. They'd have to hire somebody to come do that. They'd have to get a listing here. They might have to come into town, like all this stuff, right? Like, no, look, look, Mr. Seller, I'll get you this higher number. All I need is access time. And I'm going to bring investors in here that I might be possibly selling it to. Got it. And then when you're reselling it, the novation agreement, um, the seller signing it, I'm guessing the wholesaler or the investor signing it and the end buyer signing it is that right yes exactly uh no 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 wait i'm sorry say that which part which part is the end buyer signing the novation agreement <clears throat> oh so it's only the seller and the investor and, and me and the wholesale the middle me and i'm that's the only people it's with because remember i have the a to b contract uh-huh so the the novation is between myself and and the seller it shows there on the term it just says this is being sold to that person they don't have to sign though uh, c party c the one actually buying it is just writing an offer to buy the property uh, to whoever you so see what I'm saying? A, so the then that's the a to c contract that exactly. gets signed exactly it's it's literally just like our standard a to c and it's actually a, a an amazing thing because well, I mean, it cuts out like, yeah, sure. You could double close certain things. Right. But like in this, in this situation, you don't have to, right? Like it's just, it's literally going from A to C. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and you're allowed to have more exposure with the market. Right. Like, so it, it is a win-win. It's, it really, like I said, it comes down to the pitch on the front end. That's really what it is. Like if, if you get somebody to agree to it and they are fully understanding and you're upfront about it. You know, we we're, we're pitching novations, all, you know, especially right now in this market, everybody should be learning novations. So how do you how many novations have you done? Done about 12. OK, 12. That's a lot. So. Yeah. What's funny is we actually we've done novations on accident before we even signed up. Uh, we did one in Hawaii, basically. Um, yeah. So like we 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 locked the deal up. Right. And we knew that we can go to MLS. Right. That, that was the only part we knew. We didn't really know about novations. We're like, OK, well. She wants us to help sell it, right? We're going to list it on the market. And then we got an offer and we're like, okay, what do we do? What do we do, right? And that's when we kind of like backed into it. So that was how we got into it. We, before we got with Eric, we, we accidentally did a Hawaii innovation that made us 50K. That was like in the middle of summer last year. Okay, so what else do you think I need to know about novations to actually close the deal? Um, okay, so for novations, the biggest thing you want to know, right, is you, you want to make sure the title company is on board right so like it's it's for everything you're doing is legal right it's just that some people have never heard of novation so when you come to them with like hey here's this document here's this document here's this document they're like yo hold on what's going on here right so that's very important part right so you need to make sure there's i mean the, in in each market that we're in right we typically use the same title company right so in vegas we use the same title company in florida we use the same title company in california we use the same title company so that's actually probably that's the most important thing, right? Because at the end of the day, without the title company, you're not going to be able to close this deal. And you're not going to be able to get paid. Which title company is it? In Vegas, mm -hmm. Chicago title. Oh, so it's not like a specific like creative finance. No, 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 no. It's a big company. company. In, 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 in Florida, 
Scarab Title is the name of the, that title company. Um, mm. If anybody wants their information, I can, I can share. They're more of like a, you know, they're not Chicago Title. Obviously, everybody knows about Chicago Title. They're, they're called Scarab. They're a smaller guy. They're We have a huge, you know, really close relationship with them, and they're huge to our success. Um, and then in uh, Cali, we're using lawyers. In, in Cali, I've never actually done an ovation in Cali, though. So Okay. But but it's not like this like creative finance specific title company. They're just like title companies. But you're looking for escrow officers that know the innovation. It's the escrow officer. It's not even the company. It's the escrow officer that's like, okay, we'll make this work. Like, let's get the the documents so that we're you know compliant and we'll make this work. You know, some people are like, you know, you know, what I mean, those some of those. But then some of them are like, yeah, that's cool. Like, that's like the title company closer or agent is so important to the transaction. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just for yeah. smoothness, like. And that was the other thing about the uh, the hedge funds was we uh, we got so cool with them that we were able to use our own title company. And I know a lot of times these hedge funds don't like to do that. Um, that is one thing. Um, like Amherst started making rules where it's like your assignment fee can't be more than twenty k. Uh, Open door has open doors title company is the wackest thing in the world so like that they're they're like they're called i'm not going to say their name but they're just like a national like virtual company that like they don't even have an office or nothing like that like and like Mm. their only sole purpose is to do like open door deals and and they just suck like you know what i mean so so title company shout out to title companies if you're a good closing agent at a title company you know you 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 help our industry go around yeah, shout out to title companies. So, <laughs> all right. So, talk to me about the paperwork. Like, is it a lot? It sounds complicated, to be honest. And I know people are going to listen to this and think, man, that's very complicated. I don't understand how to, like, do all this. And it, and it, it is in terms of, okay, so paperwork, actually, it's really three pieces of paperwork. You still have the A to B, right? The standard Just purchase contract. contract. It's just the additional uh-huh. terms, right? Uh-huh. Still, still, still a contract, right? Still, uh, hey, I'm buying your house for this much. You're just in the miscellaneous. You know, I know people that put in the miscellaneous terms, like, you know, uh, subject to partner approval. You know, what I mean, you just, yeah. just just add it in there. You know, what I mean, add those two terms. So that's simple, right? And then on the back end, so that's A, and then C is a standard contract, right? So it's on the market, right? There's the open buyer is going to send an offer, right? As if yeah. you know. Whatever, same thing, right? The C yeah. document is called a novation and indemnification. That's what it is. It's it's a two or three page document, um, and in that document, it's literally it, it's similar to assignment, like I said, but it's more of a replacement, right? So assigning, you're giving, right? You're you're assigning all of these terms. Novation is saying that you're basically replacing, and in there, there's different terms that say. Part, we're responsible for, you know, making sure this, this, and this happens in between. Um, but it's semi-similar to an assignment, right? So there's only three documents. There's A to B, novation, indemnification, and then the B to C contract, right? So that's 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 B really. To C. But just to be clear, yeah, just to be clear, that B to C contract, that's a realtor with their buyer submitting an offer, a written offer, and that's going to the seller to sign. Okay, C to A, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so there's a B, A to B purchase contract, then there is a A to C contract, and then there's a B to A contract, which is the novation. Got it. Okay. All right, that makes a lot of sense now. So anything else? Talk to me about pitching it before we uh, r- go to mindset. Go ahead. Perfect. So, so, so pitching it, right? So the biggest thing with pitching it, right, is, you know, a lot of people use anchors, right? And that's where this comes in really well. So let's say, you know, you're like, okay, Mr. Seller, 125. And he's like, take a hike. Um, and he's like, well, <laughs> the next thing you know, it's okay. Well, and he tells you, you got to be at 175 or don't call me. And, then, and that's when you reel it in. Okay, Mr. Seller. Well, you know, that's really high. However, you know, if I can get you this number, can you give me two things? Can you give me time and access? He goes, okay, I'm listening. Then you hop into the spiel, right? Look, I can get you that. You know, that's obviously a much higher number than we typically pay. But if you give me time and access, we work with some parenting companies that may be very interested. And we'll take care of everything from listing it, fixing it up, selling it. And you're going to get that number. How does that sound, Mr. Seller? Yeah. And they say, sure. Most people, you got to remember, the sellers, almost every seller we deal with, I mean, there's obviously one-offs, but they just want that number, right? Like, 
most people yeah. th- that's what we find yeah there's motivation right the motivation but like if 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 you really are just like yes we'll get you that number they don't really care about b c d e f obviously there's like the timeline right so they want to close by a certain date you know they might want an emd that's a little bit higher whatever but it's it's just it's that it's that amount that they're wanting right and so that's where you mm-hmm. start with the anchor right and then they're like oh and then all of a sudden you come back up you're like look i can get you that it's kind of similar to, to subject two where you're like i just need terms but these are different type of terms right it's not yeah. you're not trying to sell them on it's a di- completely different set of terms right you're not you're not trying yeah. to so so yeah that's basically what it is um it's it's really good it's 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 definitely really good um i would say the best deals it works for are the ones that are like a little bit too tight for a flip um, but like, still, there's something to do there. You know what I mean? And ideally, yeah. the house is like, you don't want to go walk into an ovation where you have to do a, sh- you know, a lot of work because then that's going to kind of complicate it. Because then you're going to add into that additional cost, right? Like if you come in and there's the roof needs to be replaced, that's on party B, right? So yeah. let's say let's say party C brings a, a contract, right? And they're like, I need you to fix the roof. That's not on A. That's on B. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like, that's that's yeah. the whole point of the novation, right? You're saying, hey, I'll get you that number, and I'll take care of everything in between. And that's why you're listing it higher. Yeah, I get that. So what about, what's like the bad part about novations? It sounds beautiful, sounds great, you know, closed deals. So so the bad part about, I mean, there's, there's no bad part about, about novation. It's, it's more so just getting the seller to, like, some people don't want their property on MLS. That's one. That's mm-hmm. the biggest like objection we get, um, and typically this isn't going to work unless we go to the open market. You know, you have to be able to go to the open market. Um, mm-hmm. That's number one, I would say. Is people are like, you know what? Like, I'll just go list it with a realtor. You know, and and you, they're right. You know, what I mean, that's that's probably their best bet. It's not like they really need us. You know what I mean? Um, what else in terms of bad is? Oh, maybe not bad, but risky for the investor. Yeah, risky is yeah. It's it's that plus plus the 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 like like I said like the the heavy fixers. Those are the ones that can get weird because let's say party C goes through the whole process and then all of a sudden at repairs is like yo I need the, all this done. You know what I mean? And then you're kind of in a position mm-hmm. where it's like it wasn't up front. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. those are the kind of the, that's the risky part. So like we typically try and stay away from just like a gut. You know, it's it's yeah. still like a a lipstick job. You know, because in case we do have to be responsible for that, we can do that. So, mm. okay. All right. So let's talk about mindset really quick uh, before we have a coaching call after this. And we're going to have Alex on uh, teaching our students more. So if you're interested, check out Future Flipper. Um, so <clears throat> talk about mindset. I remember I've been talking to you for years and I remember when you we're still in the beginning stages. I remember when you were like, you wanted to scale and you're like, I don't know what to do. You're looking at different. Yeah. Selling me deals for overpriced. I was, you know, <laughs> what took you from like trying to figure it out to scaling? Um, I would say definitely mindset, obsession, repetition and commitment, you know, just, just every day, like this is what I do you know I wake up and if you don't like it you know if you wake up and you're like dreading you know your operation or whatever you got going on if you're still calling whatever like you got to learn how to love it you know what I mean like it's it's like Mm -hmm. I love that I love this you know what I mean I love hunting I love getting deals like if we're looking I love analyzing a deal I love looking at everything about a deal you know I love talking to my guys like oh one of my acquisition manager calls me and goes hey man like okay so this is what we got 225 like that stuff like makes me you know makes my world go so Number one is, 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 is mindset. You gotta, you you gotta love it, you know? Um, and I'm continuously kind of like learning. I think the education aspect as well, whether it's, you know, mentorships, you know, um, what do you call it? What what do you guys have in a, um, masterminds, masterminds, Masterminds. you know, you, Mm -hmm. you should always be growing in some form. Right. So like, I do think that last year when we signed up, you know, for a mastermind, I think that pushed us, right. You know, we're, I'm excited to be coming to uh, future flipper in September. Um, you know, all these things are, are, are are important right reading books all the time like i can tell you the books like that that are you know make my world go around so those are the things that i think you know help me every day and and the obsession right like if if you don't love it and you don't see yourself loving it just you know that might not be for you so um i would say those are the biggest things got it yeah and i think i want to touch on that so so in the beginning right 
um, of my real estate career and in the middle, um, I definitely had this fire where I was just like, man, I could live, sleep, uh, eat real estate. I love this. Like it is so good. And I think in the beginning of people's career, they need to have that because you're not going to get the immediate success and you need something fueling you. Right. Like now it's easy because I got money coming in. I have more money to to maneuver. I have more knowledge to work with. But in the beginning, it's like you need that energy. You need that mindset. And some people. They don't have it and they never get it. But, you know, the the obsessed people do. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I think I mean, look at like other industries, right? Like. Like, and it's a continuous doing, right? Like, like, like Kobe Bryant in the gym, 4 a.m. Like, even when he was the best, like, we show up every day. You, you know what I mean? You're, you're filming mm-hmm. multiple times every single day. Like, I, I, I mean, yeah. I, we've been trying to shoot this. Like, I know you're on your stuff, you know? And the people who are real, like, they don't stop. You know, Ryan Pineda. Yeah. You know, my man is yeah. insane. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like that, like, if you were to, like, like, dissect his day by the minute, yeah. it's, it's absolutely, you know, the high level performers yeah. have it all dialed in. So, yes. You know, those are the biggest things. Those are the absolute biggest things. And and the other thing is like for people that are like like overwhelmed by that where it's like, okay, well, you know, it's easy for you to say, you know, you've been it don't think like that. It's stack each day at a time. Number one yeah. book, Atomic Habits. Number one book. Read that book. That is, you know, it's not about this massive thing where you're just gonna all of a sudden be, you know, LeBron James. It's I'm gonna do this today and that's gonna stack on what I'm gonna do tomorrow, and that's gonna stack on what I'm gonna do tomorrow. And that little change eventually is what's going to compound. So mm-hmm. that's 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 what it is. You know, just worry about winning today. Worry about winning today, and everything else will take care of itself. Yeah. Um, last thing I want to touch on is um, with the whole mindset thing is like you're never going to learn how to play basketball on the sidelines. I don't care how much basketball you watch. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care like what tutorial you watch and. You know, you could watch a video telling you how to place the ball in your hand and how to flick your wrist. But until you go out there and actually do it, that's the only way to improve. And it's the same with real estate. You could watch YouTube. You could watch the podcast. You could do all this crap. But until you pick up the phone and call someone and start going back and forth with a with a real human, that's the only way you're going to get better. And I think that's one part that a lot of people don't get that I got right away where I was calling people like, Hey, uh, my name's Brian. Uh, uh, are you interested in selling your house? No. Okay. All right. Like, and I was fine doing that hundreds of times. And then after a thousand times, I'm like, Hey, this is Brian. I'm a real estate investor. You know, we buy house, we buy houses cash would you consider a cash offer on this property slowly getting better and better? But most people don't get there. They're too busy trying to learn on the sidelines. You have to get in the game after you. It's, it's, it's failing forward. You know, it's, it's action. You know what I mean? It's, that's really what it is. It's like, like you said, you, at one point you just have to take that step and taking that step in itself is a win. You know what I mean? Like just the fact that you did that, you may not notice it. You may have gotten hung up on, right? But no, that's not what really happened is now you have a rep. And now you have another yep. rep and now you have another yep. rep. So, yep. Yep. And you have to be okay with the beginning that you're not going to have success to don't count on it. Don't, don't count on, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to get a deal from cold calling my first week. No, just, Hey, I'm going to cold call and I'm just going to get better at that. And then you will randomly stumble across someone who is like, yeah, I do want to sell. And then you're going to learn about objections and <laughs> yeah, it, it's like the gym. It's like, the first week, you know, you're not going to see nothing. It's like, eventually you will, you know, and yeah. just, you, you just mindset, you know, just keep going, always keep going. You know, you can't lose if you can't, if you don't quit, it's just, just keep going. You know, if, if you keep going, there's, it's never, nobody's going to ever not get somewhere, right? Like just, it's yeah. the repetition, right? It's the fact that you're doing it. Good things will happen. Energy attracts energy. The fact that you're putting energy out there, something is going to come. So, yeah, but yep. I call it shaking the tree. It's like, if you want fruit from a tree standing there and looking at the fruit, it's not going to do it. You need to go and freaking shake the tree or you might have skills and climb the tree and grab the fruit. But just standing there, just hoping that these blessings just fall on you. That's not, 
that's not how the world works. Yeah. But all right, brother, I think this is a great podcast. Um, if people want to reach out to you or, or find you on social media, how do they do that? Yeah. So it's just AG, my initials, AG underscore underscore real estate. So, um, and what about deals? If someone wants to send you deals, is it Instagram or Instagram is great. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll probably, yeah. Instagram is probably the best way. Um, you know, if, if, if not hit a, hit a Brian, he'll hit me, but yeah, Instagram is the best way. AG underscore underscore real estate. Beautiful. Well, all right, guys, if you're still here, we appreciate you listening to the podcast. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel or Apple podcast. Make sure to give it a like, share it with a friend. And thank you for listening. We are out. Peace.